The Jewish Girl by Hans Christian Andersen. In a charity school, among other children, sat also a little Jewish girl. She was a good, intelligent child, the quickest in the school, but she had to be excluded from one of the subjects taught in that school, that is to say she was not allowed to take part in religious instruction, for it was a Christian school. The little girl was allowed in the meantime to open her geography book or to work out some calculation for the following day, but that was soon done, and when she had got through her geography lesson, the book, it is true, remained open before her, but she no longer read it. She listened attentively to the words of the Christian master, who soon perceived that she was more attentive than any of the other children. Read your book, Sarah, said the master, reproving her gently, but her black radiant eyes remained fixed upon him, and when once he addressed a question to her, she knew more about the subject than any of the other children. She had heard, understood, and pondered his words in her heart. Her father, a poor but honest man, had brought his daughter to the school on the condition that she was not to be instructed in the Christian religion. But as it would perhaps have caused trouble or made the other children discontented, if they had sent her out of the room during this lesson, she remained there. But henceforth this could no longer be permitted. The master went to her father and explained to him that either he would have to take his daughter away from the school or he must not be surprised if Sarah became a Christian. I can no longer remain an idle spectator of the child's beaming eyes and of her devoutness and longing of her soul for the gospel, said the teacher. The father burst into tears. I know but little of the law of my fathers, he cried, but Sarah's mother was firm in the faith, a daughter of Israel, and I have promised her on her deathbed that our child should never be baptized. I must keep my vow. It is to me like a covenant with God. And thus the little Jewish girl left the Christian school. Years had passed. In one of the smallest provincial towns, there lived, as servant in a humble household, a poor girl of mosaic creed. Her hair was as black as ebony, her eyes as dark as night, and yet full of that brightness and light so peculiar to the daughters of the East. It was Sarah. The expression in the face of the grown-up girl was still the same as that of the child. When sitting on the school bench and listening attentively to the words of the Christian teacher. Every Sunday the sound of the organ and the singing of the congregation sounded across the street into the house where Sarah was industriously and conscientiously at work. Thou shalt keep the Sabbath holy, said the voice of the law in her heart, but her Sabbath was a working day with the Christians, and this did not seem to suffice her. Does God reckon by days and hours, she thought in her soul, and when this idea was once awakened in her mind, it was a consolation to her that on the Christian Sunday her hour of devotion was less disturbed, and when the sound of the organ and the singing entered the kitchen where she was at work, even this place became sacred to her. Then she read in the Old Testament the treasure and comfort of her people, but she read only this, for she faithfully remembered what her father and her teacher had told her when she left the school about the vow which her father had made to her dying mother that she should never be baptized nor deny the faith of her fathers. The New Testament was to remain a closed book for her, and yet she knew a great deal of it, and the gospel resounded in her with the recollections of her childhood. One evening, she sat in a corner of the room. Her master was reading aloud, and she could listen to him because it was not the gospel, but an old story book which he read. The book told of a Hungarian knight taken prisoner by a Turkish pasha, who had him yoked with his oxen to the plow and driven with lashes of the whip, ill-treated him beyond measure, and almost let him die of thirst. 
The knight's faithful wife at home sold her jewels and mortgaged her castle and land. His friends collected large sums. The ransom demanded for his release was almost more than they could pay. But at last it was collected, and the knight rescued from servitude and shame. Ill and suffering, he arrived at his home. But soon there was a fresh appeal to fight against enemies of Christendom. The news also came to the knight, who was still alive, and he could no longer rest and remain at home. They had to lift him on his war horse. His cheeks colored, his strength seemed to return, and he went forth to battle and to victory. And the very same Pasha, who had him yoked before the plow, now became his prisoner and was taken to his dungeon. But hardly an hour had passed before the knight stood before the captured Pasha and asked him, What do you think now awaits you? I know well, replied the Turk, retaliation. Yes, the retaliation of the Christians, replied the knight. Christ's doctrine teaches us to forgive our enemies and to love our neighbor, for God is love. Go therefore in peace, return to your home, I give you back to your beloved ones. But be in future mild and humane toward those who suffer. Then the prisoner burst into tears. How could I think such kindness possible? Shame and torture seemed to wait for me, seemed so certain. I took poison which I secretly carried about me. I shall succumb to its effects in a few hours. I must die. It is impossible to save me. But before I die, teach me the doctrine which gives room to such immeasurable love. It is grand and divine. Grant me that I may die in this doctrine as a Christian. And his request was granted to him. Such was the legend which the master read from the old storybook. All those present listened with great attention. But she who sat still in the corner, Sarah, the Jewish girl, felt her heart inspired. Large tears came into her radiant black eyes. She sat there with the same feeling of piety with which she had sat in the school. She felt the sublimeness of the gospel, and tears rolled over her cheeks. But, however, the last words of her dying mother came before her. Let not my child become a Christian, sounded in her heart, with the words of the law, Honor thy father and thy mother. I am not received into the community of the Christians, she said to herself. They tease me as a Jewish girl. The neighbor's boys did so only last Sunday, when I stopped before the church door and looked in when the altar candles were burning and the congregation singing. Yes, ever since I was at school, I have felt the power of Christianity, a power which is like a sunbeam, and which, however much I close my eyes, penetrates into my heart. But I will not grieve you in your grave, mother. I will not break my father's vow. I will not read the Bible of the Christians. Have I not the God of my fathers? To him I will remain faithful. Years passed by once more. Her master died. The widow came into difficult circumstances. The maid was to be dismissed. But Sarah did not leave the house. She became the support in need and kept the home together. She worked till late at night and gained the daily bread through the industry of her hands, for there was no relation to assist the family, and the widow became weaker from day to day and was tied to a sick bed for months. Sarah worked and sat also nursing and watching by the bedside of the sick woman. She was gentle and good, an angel of blessing to the poverty-stricken household. There on the table lies the Bible, said the sick woman to Sarah. Read me a little from it. The night seems so long to me, so long that I am thirsting for the word of God. And Sarah bowed her head. She took the book, folded her hands round the Bible of the Christians, opened it and read to the sick woman. Tears often came into her eyes, but they were radiant and beaming and it became light in her heart. Mother, she whispered, your child must not receive the baptism of Christians, not be received into their community. You have wished it, and I will honor your wish. 
We are one on this point here below. But beyond this earth, there is a higher union in God. He leads and guides us beyond death. He descends to earth, and when he has let it suffer thirst, he showers fertility over it. I understand it. I do not know myself how I learned to understand it, but it is through him, through Christ. She trembled all over when she pronounced the holy name, and a baptism as of fiery flames overcame her and overwhelmed her body. She struggled convulsively. Her limbs gave way, and she sank, fainting, weaker than the sick woman whom she nursed. Poor Sarah, said the people. She is exhausted from work and night watching. She was carried into the hospital of the poor. There she died, and from there she was born to the grave, but not to the churchyard of the Christians. There was no place for a Jewish girl. Outside, near the wall, they dug a grave for her. God's sun, which shines over the graves of the Christians, also throws his rays over the Jewish girl's grave outside the wall, and when the psalms sound over the churchyard, they also pass over her solitary resting place. And the call to the resurrection also appeals to her, who sleeps there, in the name of Christ our Lord, who spake to his disciples, John baptized you with water, but I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost.